Yo, welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be covering the Bhutan, uh, not, not, the, not the country, uh, but, but the uh, button component in React Suite. And we're going to be going through the documentation and we're going to learn about how to work with it in our basic React app project that we installed in the last video. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've opened up the documentation for buttons and the link to this is in the description down below. And the first thing that we can see right here is that it talks about the commonly used buttons in React Suite. And the uh, four ones are button, which is just a basic element in the component, which can be styled pretty quickly. Uh, we'll be covering styling as well to a basic level. Icon button, so it's just a button with an icon. Button group, so a whole group of buttons together in a layout. And a button toolbar, which is pretty interesting. And now, let's go ahead and work with this as opposed to me individually going through the documentation and talking about each individual thing. Let's go ahead and mess around with it. Alrighty, so the button component has a couple of different types of appearances that it can have. The regular one, which is right here, the default button, where there's no styling whatsoever, just a gray button. You have different type of props ability, so if we give it a prop called appearance, and we can see that appearance has default, ghost, link, primary, and subtle. Default is just this gray button right here. Ghost is just a button that just has an outline, and after that you have link which just looks like a regular link oops and then after that you have subtle I think I said subtitle earlier I meant to say subtle and that's how it looks it looks like a subtle button alrighty next thing I want to cover are the sizes so before we cover that I'm going to actually use what the documentation is doing and I'm going to create a toolbar of buttons so think of this as like a parent tag which has its own little individual children, or in this case, it would be one parent button group, and each of them has its own button. So it'll be button toolbar, and inside of there, we can do a button, and I can say, let's say this is called large. I'm gonna do exactly how the documentation says, so there's no confusion whatsoever. Copy this a couple of times, and now if I save it, we should see five different buttons that all say large. Let's say this is medium, Let's say this one is mm, small and extra small. I'll get rid of this one. So the way to define sizes, it's really simple. All you have to do is give it the size prop and just call the different sizes. So you have large, medium, small, and extra small. So you can imagine what large looks like. It's a very large button. Medium is the default, small, small button. And if we want to do an extra small button, we can see how that would look using excess and uh, you can see a large button, these two are the same exact size. You know what, I'll just add that too, so size and D. So now we can see we have large, medium, small, and extra small. Oh, whoops, I meant to do SM, not MD. There we go. Large, medium, small, and extra small. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and talk about colors. So colors are really simple in this library. Um, at least for buttons, you have a certain amount of colors available to you right out of the box. You can obviously add your own custom colors, which I'll show you how to do in a bit. But the colors you have available to you out of the box are red, orange, yellow, green, cayenne, blue, and violet. And if you want to use these, again, it's very simple. All you have to do is on the button that you're trying to change, give it a prop of color and the color you're trying to change it to. So in this case, I'll call the large one red. And remember this, since we are using a default button right here it will not change because um, for some reason the buttons the default buttons don't style at all at least from color wise so we have to give it a different type of appearance and that appearance let's call large and we'll give it the appearance of ghost and we'll do the same thing for extra small so I'll give extra small the color of blue and let's give it an appearance of let's do link now we should see a blue link. Well, actually, that that's a really bad color for a blue. Uh, let's do let's do yellow. There we go. So now we have a yellow link and a ghost styled red button. Alrighty. After that, let's go ahead and talk about some icons to use with buttons. So to actually work with icons, you have to install the uh, the dependency from R Suite. And it which is going to be npm install dash dash save at r suite slash icons. And this will install our icons that come straight out of the box from React Suite. This isn't from Font Awesome right now. Alrighty, so to use the icons library is a little confusing. I had some trouble figuring out why some things were why they were. 
and I'll show you those things in a second. So to actually use an icon, you have to import something from our suite called icon button. You can't use icons in a regular button, it just won't work. So I've created a button toolbar uh, parent tag, and inside of there I'm going to give it an icon button with a self-closing brace, and I'll call a prop called icon with curly braces, and inside of here is where we're going to be giving it the icon. Now, this is the part that really confused me about React Suite icons for some reason, is that you can just go ahead and import a icon like this if you wanted, or if you wanted to use multiple ones, you could do, you can get rid of this little ending right there and just import it from slash icons. You have to put this in a curly brace, but the confusing thing is that all the icons, they don't have the little icon ending if you want to import multiple ones, multiple one of them. I hope that's right English. But if you want to import just one, you would have to add the icon at the end of it and add exactly what you're trying to import. But if you're trying to import multiple ones, then you would have to call, you have to get rid of the icon and get rid of the uh, actual icon in the end right here, if that makes sense. So to actually use this icon, all we have to do is call gear and put the self closed brace. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this since we're not going to be using that at all. And now if we see, we should see a gear icon right there. Now let's go ahead and import another one. So if I go back and I open up the list of icons, the link to this is in the description down below. Let's go ahead and select uh, message. Now remember, we're going to be importing a bunch of icons. So I'll be calling here message instead of message icon. So I'll go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it again and I'll call message like so. And now we should see a message icon right there. Perfect. Now ready. Now let's say if you wanted to add some styling to this, how would you do that? Really simple. So let's say you want to add some text. What we have to do is we have to make it a double um, closing brace tag like so. And inside of there we can give it some text. So I'll give it the text of message. And now we should see some message text right there. Now let's say we wanted to add some color. So we would have to do give it the prop of color and we have all the colors available to us. So in this case, I'll just call orange. And remember that this is a um, subtle button, so it can't have any color props. So you have to change that to a primary. So I'll give it the appearance of primary, like show. That looks like a beautiful button. Now let's, I don't want the icon to be on the left side. I want it on the right side. So I'll do placement and I'll do right like so. Perfect, and now I want to make it look absolutely disgustingly ugly. So I'm going to do circle if we wanted to round it. And my god, this is the ugliest, best looking button I've ever seen. Alrighty, now I'm going to show you guys how to extend a button all the way if you wanted. So I'm just going to go ahead and import a simple button underneath my button toolbars, and I'll give it a uh, text of button. And if you want to extend it, all you have to do is give it block, like so. And now we should see it extend all the way like so. It's a little faded, but now we can see it right there. Now let's see if we want to disable it. Really simple. All you have to do is give it the prop of disabled like so. And now we cannot press it. Remember that uh, this is a subtle button. So if you wanted to give it another appearance, we can do appearance. To equal to primary. And now we should see a primary button that is disabled. Hopefully, well, that really wouldn't make any difference because it's disabled. But there we go. Am I spelling this right? Appear, appear, oh, appear, there we go, appearance. There we go, that makes more sense. I uh, forgot to add an E between the ear of appearance. And if you want to add some loading to the button, really simple, all you have to do is just call the prop loading. And that's it, now it's loading and it's disabled and it has an appearance of primary. So now let me show you guys how to actually make a group of buttons. So we learned how to create a button toolbar, but let's say you wanted to group certain buttons together and group other buttons together. And the only way that I can show you guys how to work with this is with a story. So there was once a button high school. So I'm gonna define that right here. So I'll call button toolbar. And inside of this high school, there were groups. So I'm gonna call button group. And this group was the popular group. Um, they were always the best buttons. And each of those buttons 
had a ranking. So this one was number one. And then it was number two, three, four, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to just go ahead and change these numbers. And this was the popular group button right here. They were sticking together through thick and thin. But then there was another group of buttons, a radical group of buttons. A button group that you may call, I, I really don't even know where I'm going with this, but so you have another group of buttons. And let's say they're the, uh, the athletic button group people thingy and their button has an appearance of get this primary <gasps> primary and their ranking is now actually number one so they're trying to take over the popular button group this story makes absolutely no sense but I think you're understanding what I'm trying to do here so now we have two different groups of buttons hashing it out trying to basically take over number one spots. We have button group number one, that's the popular squad, and then it's the athletic squad that's uh, with a appearance of primary. And then there's always that one loner button who's just by himself in the corner doing nothing. And that's just going to be button number 69. You thought I was never going to bring this number out again, but I did. And I'm going to give it an appearance of ghost and he's all by himself in that little corner over there. Alrighty, so that concludes this video. Um, I've gone into enough detail about how to work with buttons that you should have a pretty good understanding of how to work with them now. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you on the next, uh, in the next part. Peace.